That's how you doing, mate. Not bad at all, mate. I'm all right. Thanks just, for uh, thanks for being here. It's not a problem at all, mate. Very appreciated. Sorry, it took so long to get back to you, mate. It was uh, eventually got there. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. So, uh, how did you first sort of get into football? What age were you when you started? Who was your first team, etc.? So I was probably playing football. Um, to think about this, just for a young age, you know. I mean, when you start playing football, mate, you know what it's like. I mean, you're just kicking the ball for a, for a young age. Yeah. Um, first team I was at was was Lumber Rangers. Um, sort of playing with, with my primary school as well. Um, but my dad was my coach at the time. Uh, yeah. And funnily enough, uh, Alan McCoy son played as well. So it was almost my dad and Alan McCoy at the same time. So. My dad claimed that he was the better of the coach at the two. So, uh, but playing there, you know, it was good, uh, good early memories and stuff. Um, but uh, probably about the time when I was around eight or nine, uh, they folded and became a team called Glen Tang Thistle. Uh, yeah. yeah. They were just based at a club Barking. Um, and that kind of started up uh, in Fidea. You know, started, that's when football started getting a bit more serious for me in terms of uh, when I when I grew a wee bit because uh, the ability was always there you know when I was younger yeah. um, and then when I was when I was 12 years old uh, you know I really kicked on um, played in a tournament at, at boys club level at Renfrew Vicks tournament and that's when when there was a few clubs that started started coming in so that's yeah. when I kicked on my first team was London Juniors as well and Guntine they're sort of that? two close teams to me aye Guntine affiliated I affiliated well. the girl so it was good to see they're still going you know because I was ready at the very start when, when they first started and you know, it was the pitches that before they, they moved to the new pitches. Uh, it was the one just with a big hill with the with the swings yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, and you know, had some really good games there. And we played at Grave sometimes as well. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was it was a good setup there. Um, and I'm glad to hear the club still running. You know, it's, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Cut them up. I'll still play with them. So you you're a midfielder. Were you always a midfielder? So that's probably part of the sort. Of, it actually came a decision where it was either between uh, Rangers or Celtic who I was going to sign with. Um, I played centre half a lot, just at the boys' club. Uh, kind of played at the back, and then even you know towards the end of the the kind of career at my boys' club, I was I was playing centre mid only for a few games, you know. Mm. Um, but I think it's seven sides. It's I probably was even the best player in my boys' club team. I mean, at times you, you would maybe see glimpses of talent and stuff, but. I mean, it's something that I, I see now, uh, you know, watching younger kids, that the best players always play centre midfield at, mm-hmm. at seven aside and nine aside, you know, because you want them the ball as much as possible. Like myself, but I play centre mid as well. <laughs> there you go, mate. <laughs> Quite right. But I think as I get older, I, I don't know, I, I think I, I maybe thrived a bit more just being on the bigger pitch because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm left sided and, and my ability's always, always been my left foot. So I think trying to utilise that um, on a bigger pitch kind of suited me as I got mm-hmm. older. What sort of players did you base your game off back then, back then when you were younger? I mean, base my game off back then. I mean, I was a big I was probably grew up more than my United when I was older. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say, I would say Paul, well, Paul Scholes has, has been my been my idol since yeah. you know, forever. Uh, but I think coming up and growing up as a major support, you know, Pedro Mendes at that time was somebody that, that I watched and, mm-hmm. and loved. Um, you know, you obviously get the Barry Ferguson's and that as well, and Kevin Thompson, who I work closely now. I mean, these were yeah. guys that I used to grow up watching play. Um, so, I mean, it was just a, it was just always a dream for me as as a kid as well, just being able to. And you had the Rangers talk with with Ashmore in the back and that, and it was just mm-hmm. a dream for me to eventually go on and eventually do it, which which I did at, at youth level. So you then you got your move to Rangers. What do you sort of remember about your early years at Rangers? How how was the transition from boys club obviously into pro youth? Um. <sighs> It was different, to be fair, but I think back then, pro youth systems were probably quite frowned upon at that time. Um, mm. You know, you, you used to get uh, people saying that they didn't want their kids to go into pro youth too early and, and all this and all that, which which was fine. You know, you completely understand that and you still get a bit of that now, uh, to a certain extent. Maybe not quite as much as, as what it used to be, um, but it was a tough decision for me uh, at the time because there was a few clubs that... that they were white speakers or whatever, and I was in Air United at the time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, when when I was up at Rangers, uh, you know, it was literally played a twenty minute game, and they asked me to sign after that. It wasn't mm-hmm. as if it was like a long trial period. Um, so I was probably quite blessed in that sense. Um, and then you go in there, it's you know, it's better players, it's training at the best facility in, 
and probably the UK. You're yeah. training. You're going for training twice a week. To you know, I was first of getting off one my school bus and getting on another bus to go to training. I was mm-hmm. doing my homework on the bus and I was getting in at nine, ten o'clock at night. And uh, you know, it's something that I stress the kids now. They don't realise how lucky I'll be some of the stuff they've got because. Uh, yeah. Not saying that it, that it was bad at all, but I mean the transition of how serious I actually became at that time in that young age, it was a big thing to commit to. And you know, it's kudos to my mum and dad as well for all the places they went to. They travelled the whole of the country, got to watch me play, you know. So, um, but you know, obviously it was a lot different. The standard was different. The players were different. But I mean, I couldn't have felt any more welcome, and I, I, I felt I fitted in straight away. Did you feel that uh, it had a big effect on like your schoolwork and your social life? Massively, mate. Massively. Um, and it's something that the club's fantastic at now. Uh, back then, maybe not as, uh, not as much. Because, um, you know, it was it was either one or the other probably at that time. So I probably missed more days of school than, than what I went. Um, yeah. And, and for my mum, my mum's really big in education. You know, my brother's done, done really well with his education at uni and stuff. And it was quite hard for my mum to probably see me. Because it wasn't as if I wasn't like bright in school coming up. Because... Um, mm-hmm. You know, so early years of high school, I'd, I'd all the right qualifications and stuff, and it just kind of slipped away for because I missed too much school. Probably could apply myself better at the times, yes, but I just think for me, for the minute where I, I, I signed my, my pre contract at, at 14 to go in full time when I was 16, I just had my, my kind of heart set in football. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, after that, I, I just never really looked back at the solid education side of it until later on in life, you know. Yeah, yeah, so uh, later years at Rangers, you worked with Graham Murray, he said he was how much. How much of an impact did he have on you at the time? Huge. Uh, I mean, I've always said it. Um, I had I'd probably eight to nine months with Mutz, uh, and he's a massive part of the reason as to why I'm back at the club now. Uh, mm. You know, we had it off straight away. Um, I, I've always said that, that if I'd longer with Mutz, I, I feel he would have enhanced my career even more than, than what he had done in the short time that I was with him. Uh, mm. One of the first things I said to him, though, which is a quite an interesting story, so... We were playing, I think it was Inverness, and it was his first game in charges and taking us. And in the first 20 minutes, we were we were playing brilliant. We were pulling the ball about. It was nil-nil. We just couldn't, it, honestly, it was the best we'd ever played. So every single person was at it. We are knocking about. And it must have been about 80, 90% possession of us, but we just didn't have that sort of final final bit. Um, and in the last sort of 20, 50 minutes of, of the first half, we just went to pot. We started getting the ball away. Everyone was trying to World Cup passes. We were just so desperate to score. And we went for the best we'd ever played to the worst we'd ever played in the space of about 15 minutes. So Mertz came in at half time and he, and he kind of had, well, not, not a go at everyone, but he was kind of asking, what well, because he'd never seen something like that before. So the, the first thing I said, this is probably when me and Mertz's relationship sort of started in that sense where I just said straight up then, I said, well, if, if you go to Ibrox, Mertz, and this is Rangers Football Club you're playing with, I said, if you go to Ibrox and you're playing a, an Inverness and no disrespect to, to other teams or a Ross County or a Hibs, Mm-hmm. And you're not one nil up after twenty minutes. I said you, you, the fans can just change all that in an instance. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I, I think Mutz when he watched the first team against Hearts that weekend. Uh, and you know the first twenty minutes, the exact same thing was happening. They were mm-hmm. bopping it about, playing really, really well. Still hadn't they scored, and then the fans just, you know, just just changed yeah, just like that okay. because it's Rangers and they expect you to be winning, you know. So, um, and that for me, you know, I, I expect Rangers to win every game, and, and I would be the exact same if I was a fan sitting in the stadium. So. I think the expectation that, that came with it and the sort of realisation that I gave Mertz that sort of first game when he came in, uh, I think I helped him in that sense as well. But as much as he helped me, he just he opened my eyes up to the game in, in ways I'd never seen before. Um, and he, he was so detailed and, and you know, he, he just took you into different aspects and areas of the game that you would never think about. Um, yeah. and, and he just brought my game from for one level to the other. Even at that sort of younger age, in the early years of the academy, do you still feel there was that pressure to perform and win every week? 100%. I mean, it was one of the things where when you were growing up in the academy, it was uh, it was uh, if you win, then it's a part in the back, well done, you're expected to win. But if you get beat, then it was like, why are you losing? You know? yeah. So but that was quite good for me growing up because, I mean, that's, that's kind of put me in good stead for the rest of my life in the sense that anything I go into now, I want to win. Um, and for the academy kids now, obviously, you, you know, we sort of changed that whole philosophy where it's not about winning anymore, it's about developing, which is probably the right thing to do in terms of the, w- the way things are now. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's better for the kids in that sense to not pressurise them in that aspect of it. Uh, but it's something for me, it's quite hard to grasp, and I know yeah. a lot of the coaches find it hard as well. Um, but it's something that we're, that we're adapting to really well, um, and, and it is about the kids, it's about developing them. Um, but 
being being a, a young boy coming through at Rangers, you know, you were <laughs> that's what it was based off. Everything was based off one, you mm. know. Um, and probably at a young age, it's it's not as much about that, but it's kind of set me set me in a good way uh, for being a young lad, just uh, and where I want to go, and my aspirations in life for for what I've done. You spent uh, eight years at Rangers, and you played the, with Scotland as well, and you played with guys like Billy Gilmore, Ross McCrory. Are they the sort of yep. two? Two standouts that you've played with, or any others that really stand out to you? I would think so. I, I mean, you know, I played with, I played with many good players. I mean, I remember John Thompson even when when he first came up from Manchester United, he mm-hmm. was, he was exceptional. Uh, you know, Jamie Brandon's at Hearts who played with, but I mean, there's boys that you've seen who who were the best players by by a mile when you were younger, who who never even went on to make it. You know, uh, I could name probably about fifteen or twenty of them, but that's just oh. one of the things that happens in, in football, and and I think Scottish football is the worst for it. Um, mm-hmm. It's hard with some of the kids when when it, when it when the way their careers can turn out. But you know, Ross and Billy, I mean, you knew who Billy straight away when he came trained was it was just. You know, a level above. He was. So was was Billy eight. training a, a year or two up with you when he played with you? So I think I, I think actually the first time I seen Billy, he, he trained with the first team, um, if I remember right. Because I, I, there was a point where I was sort of training with the first team on a quite regular basis, um, mm-hmm. and it was when Pedro uh, Pedro Senior kind of first came in, but yeah. before just Mark Wobb. Even I think I think it might even be when Mark Wobb was just leaving, but Billy came round and and trained and. And he was just, you know, he'd all the right heart. You were just watching him. He was just scanning, you know, every time before he received the ball. He was taking it with both feet. Probably not quite as physical as what he is now, but I mean, he just, you could just see a player there so early on, you know. And, mm. and then I had the pleasure also to play with him for, for a full season. And, and I'll be honest, I put my arm around him all because he was just a young boy playing at, playing at reserve level. And any time we played it, when obviously he started getting all the, the attraction and attention, it was people were just trying to smash him every game. Um, and me and Jamie Barjonas, who's still at Rangers now, we kind of put our arm around him um, and try to help him as much as possible. And, and the first team guys that came down as well, you know, Danny Wilson was somebody that was really good though. Uh, mm-hmm. Harry Forrester was excellent with him as well. Um, yeah. But, you know, all these experienced pros came down and they've seen a talent there. Um, and it was just a matter of just try, just try to mould them and, and give them the right guidance. But there was no doubts in my mind for the first time I seen him that he was going to go into big things mm-hmm. and, and, you know, look at what he's doing now. Uh, it's no surprise to you that He's how well he's performing at such a high level than now. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you see him doing the same things against Liverpool that, that he was doing at the reserve team football when mm-hmm. I was watching him, you know. So, um, but, you know, there's that side of it where it's, where it's talent. And then I look at Ross McCrory, who has just got there through hard work and dedication. Yeah. Um, same as his brother, that's just committed his life to, to being a professional footballer. And, and you know, there's, it couldn't happen to any other family, the way, the, you know, the, how successful they've been, um, you know, they're really good people and, mm-hmm. and you know, they're really hard working boys and, and they've got everything they deserve, but but they've worked for it. Um, yeah. And, and that's the difference to Billy, who, as much as he has worked for it, yes, but the talent was always there as well. Mm-hmm. You also trained with the first team, you said that, mentioned that a few times. How big an experience was that for you when you were younger? <laughs> it was massive. I mean, it's probably something that I look back on now and and I wouldn't say regret the kind of way I went around there, but it's something that I look at. And I remember being on a, on a call with Mick Beale. Michael Beale is also the assistant now at Rangers mm-hmm. not that long ago. And, and he said that the, the senior tiers, uh, the senior players in the first team are the ones that will that will pick the young players when they come round. So, I mean, I think at the time when I was going round, I mean, you were just happy to go round and train and you almost not expected to go round and train again. But you thought just because you trained with the first team once, you were, you were yeah. going to be coming round again at some point And that was just the way it was going to work. So... I think the first time I went round and it was Mark Walbert was the manager, uh, I did reasonably well um, and then trained a couple more times after that. But it was sort of when, when Pedro was there, it was, you know, the more frequent times where, you know, it was, it was myself, Ross, uh, Billy on occasions as well, you know, Barjo, we were all going around and training mm-hmm. quite occasionally. And, uh, you know, if there was one thing that I could go back and do, it was just, you know, just try to stamp your authority down when you're around there yeah. and just try and show a bit more rather than just, not going through the motions, but just been happy to be a young boy team in the first team mm-hmm. and just, you know, training, just treating it like training rather than, you know, this isn't going to be the last time I'm around here. Um, yeah. And I think that's something that probably opened my eyes up to that a bit more when I was at Ross County. Mm-hmm. What sort of first team players stood out for you at the time when you were there? Were there any real standouts? Nico Cranshaw. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was, uh, you know, technical ability. Just when every time the ball came in, you know, you could, 
play a pass at him as, as hard as you wanted, and it wouldn't matter how hard you played the ball at him, he, he would control it. Uh, Lee Wallace was brilliant as well. Mm-hmm. Lee, Lee Waldo was really, really good. Um, you know, there was there was loads of good players on that team, to be fair. Um, even Zella Lynn that came for a while was a good mm-hmm. player. Uh, but even Martin Waghorn, I really liked Waggy as well. Um, but, you know, there was that many good... There was loads of good players at this time. Uh, I think for me, somebody that came down and played with us, at times was was Barry McKay. Barry McKay's probably one of the best players I've ever played with. Yeah. Um, you know, he was he was excellent and what he did for Rangers in the short time he was there was, you know, starting for the bottom and going all the way up. He was a player that it could have quite easily still been at the club now. Uh, mm-hmm. and he's still having a good career as it is, but Barry was somebody as well that was that that I rated quite highly every time I went around. Mm. Was there a real was there a real difference in management style between Kishinya and Warburton? Um, I would say Matt Warburton was quite rigid. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he didn't ever really want to change the way he was playing, which you know quite suited me. Being, you know, I like getting on the ball and yeah. and playing football in a nice way. And you know, Matt Warburton's ideas were excellent on football, I thought. But maybe just a wee bit rigid in terms of what he wanted to do, because um, he, he never really wanted to change the way they were playing. But in terms for us, it was the elf team level. I mean, it, it was brilliant because we would just go out and just keep the ball for 90 mm-hmm. minutes and, you know, that's that's kind of what they wanted. And, you know, you were getting it, you know, if you kept the ball for long enough, you were going to score. Um, yeah. And Pedro came in and, I mean, I wouldn't say it was, it was, it was a massive change because he still wanted to play football the right way. But um, I remember Clint Hill t- uh, touched on it quite recently in, in another interview that, when he came in and had his first meeting, he, he put his games up for Mexico up on up on the screen, mm-hmm. and you know it was it was these games been played in you know this heat where it couldn't be fast forward and attack yeah. football, all the time. and they were just keeping the ball just the way they could, and and you know it wasn't really as intensive as what Scotland was, um, mm-hmm. but you know I, I like Pedro. I, I thought his training was actually actually good, um, and. You know, it was it was just another experience for me that, that I've just kind of taken with me um, mm-hmm. as, as my career's went on. You then left Rangers and went to Ross County. How did that move sort of come about? What influenced that? I think it was more so, I mean, I was I, I left at the time. I was reserve team captain. You know, I had a really good relationship with Mutz um, and, and Craig as well, who, who's obviously still academy director now. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I just think for me, I think they probably seen the benefits for me in leaving at that time. I think yeah. maybe the first team, you know, they probably didn't quite see me being a first team player at that point, and they maybe seen boys that were younger that, that had more of a chance to, to go and progress to being the first team, which, mm-hmm. you know, I see it now from my star side, which which I completely understand now, more so yeah. than probably what I did then. But it's one of the things that, that when you leave, you know, you never leave anywhere in bad terms. I've never done that in anywhere I've been in my career. Mm-hmm. And, and you know it was that way where I shook hands with much. I shook hands with Craig and, and when I heard that, that Ross County were coming in uh, and it was Jim McIntyre and, and Stuart Kerr well Jim McIntyre was the first team manager at the time mm-hmm. uh, I think for me I just wanted to be playing first football um, and you know going up there I, I went up and trained for two days just to kind of see how it was um, and you know I was really surprised at the facilities or how good they were mm-hmm. uh, probably the best facilities I, I would say well probably not out with Aberdeen now but out with Rangers and Celtic at that time, yeah. they were they were probably the best facilities in Scotland. You know, really well run club, looked after, really good owner, really nice owner. Um, and you know, my first few weeks there, I, you know, I hit the ground running really. Um, mm-hmm. And then obviously situations changed. The manager get, manager got sacked, and and a different manager came in, and that's when sort of things changed up there as well. Yeah. When you went up, was it sort of different? Because you obviously had to move away from home to go up there. How how did you cope with that at the time? Well, that's a probably another reason why I wanted to do it because I just uh, I wanted to believe in myself. I was eighteen at the time. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it'd be a good experience for me to go and live on my own. Uh, you know, my mum and dad have I'm quite lucky that you know I've got a mum and dad to to look after me and my brother really well, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know put dinner out for us every night and all the rest of it. And I think for me, it was just a matter of just going away, having to do your own washing, having to go home after training, cook your own food, that I just, it was something that I just wanted to do. Um, and for the first month when I was up there, I was probably getting a bit frustrated because I was staying in a bed and breakfast for the first month I was there when I got promised, <laughs> you know, a house with bread and all the time by, by the time I got there. But probably about a month in, uh, you know, it was a three-bedroom house. Me and another boy for Liverpool stayed in it. It was brand new. It was right in the centre of the ding wall and we couldn't have been any uh, 
it couldn't have been a nicer place, you know. It mm-hmm. was it was brilliant. Um, and you know, all the boys up there, I'm still talking to them all now. Uh, and you know, the people and and everything up there was was amazing. But it was probably just you know different to life in Glasgow, and that was the yeah. thing that that I struggled with most, I think. So. So you then sort of had a, a short spell in Malta. You were at still in Albion. You were at Shunra. And then you moved out to, is it Ventura Academy in America? Ventura County Fusion, yep. How, how did yep. that sort so, of come about? Uh, I mean, I know so I know a guy that's out there um, who knows my mum quite well. Um, and he asked me to go out, you know, season before that. It was, I think it was when I was just coming back to Ross County. He asked me to go out that season before. And the timing for me, Paul, wasn't right because I just wanted a year at playing football at home. Um, mm-hmm. So same with Stranra, albeit, I mean, it was three hours away on a Saturday, whatever it was, but you were training in Renfrew two mm-hmm. nights a week, which is 10 minutes away last day, you know. So uh, I just kind of wanted to stay at home. Um, and it wasn't right at that, that specific time. But um, when he asked me, you know, you know, the year after, I was I was working part-time playing football. It was a bit more kind of realism and thinking of what life is. Uh, you know, working all day and then going to the train at night, it, it was a real graft. And... I just think that I just needed something to go and do that was that was going to bring back my love for football again because I really lost all the love for it at that time. Uh, and when I went out there, you know, it was just playing football in LA, traveling all over California to play a football. I mean, it was no bad, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and it was something that I would 100% consider to do in my life again. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just one of the things, it was an opportunity that I was given and, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful for it and, and I'm glad I've done it. Mm-hmm. How different sort of was the, the style of football out there compared to here? I wouldn't say it was that much different from academy football um, because they try to implement the right things and they try and play the right way and you know the ball's in the deck and it's all nice and icy and all that um, but I was expecting to go out there and probably be one of the better players technically mm-hmm. um, and kind of thrive off that sense of it um, and you know, I was just expecting them all to be big athletes and just be powerhouses. And because mm-hmm. I was one of the youngest boys uh, in my team, to be fair, at the time, uh, all the boys were 23, 24 that, that I was sort of playing with. There was a yeah. few younger ones as well, don't get me wrong. But um, you know, that I ended up being one of the well, not the the less technical ones, but a, a lot of the boys in my team were were so technical. Uh, I played midfield with a guy from from France who was both footed and. You know, he could take corners for both sides with both feet. He mm-hmm. was just, uh, and you know, that that's what they were all like. Um, and my probably biggest strength out there ended up being that driving determination side over that sort of mm-hmm. Scottish within thing. And that probably goes back to the point I made earlier where, you know, I, that that winning mentality that I had for yeah. a young age kind of stood me in good stead when I was there. Um, my first game that we played, we were getting beat 2-0 at half time, And I remember coming in. And the changing room, and it was like as if the game was done, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I came in, and and I just shut the changing room door for the manager. I came in and just kind of had a go at all the lads, just saying, <laughs> you know, the game's not done. There's still four or five minutes to be played, and and you know, it kind of geed the boys up a wee bit. Um, and then the manager came in and said, "I don't need to say anything." You know, he's he's covered it all, and then mm-hmm. went back out and. And we ended up winning the game 3 2. I mean, I'm not saying that <laughs> I'm the reason why we only won the game, obviously, Aye. but it was just. Uh, that sort of mentality I just that, that I had for a young age that, that was embedded within it, it kinda came it kinda came to my advantage later on and especially that, that's probably when I noticed it most and, and you know, the guys kinda thrived off my energy uh, in the middle of the pitch and mm-hmm. you know, my communication and talking, I just try to drive them on as much as possible and, and it worked, you know. We I mean, obviously seen uh, like you said, Danny Finlayson and, and Cammy Palmer go out to America this year. How much of an impact do you think that can have on them? A, a really positive one? Massive. I mean, I sat down with the guys uh, when when they were offered the chance to go out and play, and you know we played against Orange County when we were out there. Um, really, really, really real, uh, well run club. Uh, mm-hmm. Facilities are unbelievable. Um, you know, you're <laughs> living in California, you can't get much better yeah. than that. Um, and you know, when when they came over and, and the partnership was was first in talks, met all the guys that were affiliated with the club, and you know they're all really good people as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for me, it was probably important just to sit down with the guys and, and let them know what the, what they were going to be expecting when they went out there. And and uh, obviously, situations now, it's probably a slightly different situation for what it would have been if, mm-hmm. if you know, the, the whole pandemic uh, wasn't going on. But I think for them, it, 
it would have been excellent because it would have taken them out of their comfort zone again, made them learn themselves, made them think about, you know, what being a footballer twenty four seven is rather than just when you're at training. Because uh, mm-hmm. being a full time footballer is more than just, uh, you know, just on the training pitch and the games at the weekend. It's it's every every single day. It's, it's your life that you need to learn yeah. as a footballer. Um, and I think for them it, it would have been excellent, and especially with this because. You know, during a pandemic, if you don't come back fit to training, then you'll be left behind. Um, mm-hmm. And I think for the guys been out there, been out there by yourself, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll have a massive, massive impact on them in a, in a positive way for sure. Mm-hmm. So you're now back at Rangers working in the academy. Can you explain what your, your role is? Uh, so my main role is just in the scouting department. Uh, so it's me, well, in the children's uh, scouting department. So... It's me and my boss, uh, David Stevenson, who's the academy scouting manager. Uh, mm-hmm. We basically sort of oversee the whole the whole scouting department. There's 42 scouts to look after. Um, you know, there's <laughs> the, the, the scout that actually brought me in is, is still there. So I don't know mm-hmm. if that makes me feel like I'm young or maybe makes <laughs> him feel a bit old. But, um, you know, it's everyone, you know, I love it. It's, it's brilliant. I'm, I'm learning different things every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm obviously massively grateful to be at the club, but at the same time, I mean, it's something that, that Craig and Mutz said to me when I was leaving that they wanted me back in, in at the club at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they didn't actually know what that role was going to be at the time. It was probably more down sort of coaching role at that time. Yeah. Um, and then I met them just before I went to America and they said, we've, we've got a job for you. Uh, well, we've got something that we think could quite suit you, but we can't tell you yet. And I was that way where I was like, <laughs> well... I'm going to go to America and I'll, I'll sort of see what happens when I come back. And, and Craig Foreman, when I was out there, you know, he, he made me an offer to come back and I always knew that whenever I was going to be offered to go back there, it, it would be something I would jump at and, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Aye, there was no real second thoughts when you first got offered the role? Well, there wasn't. I mean, it was just a matter of what it was going to be that, that I was sort of getting into, but mm-hmm. I'm sort of touching, I'm doing a bit of scouting, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm out in the coaching pitch sometimes as well with coaches that, that I grew up working with as is, is, mm-hmm. is a young kid and, and I try and pass that experience on to the kids for what I had in my time in the academy and, mm-hmm. and tell them the things that they do, they, well not the things that they need to do because everyone's different but just try and help them in a way that, that will make it a bit easier for them or, or maybe mm-hmm. see things in a different side of it and I think as well it's probably important to the parents you know because my mum and dad they, they went through everything um, mm-hmm. you know and, and it is, it's tough being an academy parent because it's a lot of commitment especially when you've got other kids in the house. Uh, it's something that I feel my brother always, I mean, everyone always saw the attention, the family always sort of gravitated towards me in a way, you know, yeah. because it was, I was four or five days of the week, the football was taken up in my life, mm-hmm. and if I wasn't happy, then, then nobody was happy. That's what it kind of was like in the house at times. And uh, I think for families, it's, it's massive. that, uh, and, I, and I sit down and I, ch- I chat with parents and I phone parents all the time, and... Uh, any parent at the club knows that I'm always on my phone if they ever need me, but mm-hmm. it's just that I just try to pass on my advice to them as much as possible and, and try and think it for the, the kids' point of view rather than rather than what I would do personally. It's just yeah. it's always about the kids and any way that I can help develop, then, then I hope I can. Did you sort of feel that your experience from obviously being in the academy for, for eight years helps you in, in your role at the moment? 100%. I mean, I don't think I would I would be at the academy if, if I wasn't there, you know, and, mm-hmm. I, and I think a lot of the a lot of the other parents and a lot of the other staff and a lot of the other kids, they, they appreciate that, that that's my kind of background and where I came from. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's obviously something that I've done at my time in the academy, you know, what that is, I'm, I'm not too sure, uh, but Craig and Mutt's obviously seen something in me that, that would add to the team and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working with, with staff and when I see how much graft and, and work they put in the, the day-to-day, the, the stuff that the, the kids get now, and, mm-hmm. you know, the academies came on so far since since I left three years ago, and it's just like, it's just, I mean, I can't even describe how, how far it's actually came in that short period of time. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. Stephen Gerrard's massive coming in and, and had a massive impact in the club yeah. since he came in, and you see him about the place, and, you know, he's, he's, he's aura and his persona when he's, when he's walking about the building, you just you just know when he's walked into a room, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And for somebody like that to be to be at the helm of the club and, and Ross Wilson as well, who's been fantastic since he came yeah. in, it's uh, you know it's the, the club's definitely definitely going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So, what sort of advice would you have to any young players looking to make it in the game, or even in in a sort of role that you're in? 
think, uh, you know, it's a tough question to be fair, but I would probably say, you know, just as, as long as you're enjoying it, that, that's mm-hmm. always the main thing. I mean, putting my smile on your face is, is the most important thing in football, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was so close to chucking it probably two years ago, mate, and I was just like, you know, when I was going to train at Stalin Alby, and I was just like so demoralised at the fact yeah. that I was, I was going to play football, you know, it was just that way, but it was like, I would have rather done anything else at that time than play mm-hmm. football. So, but I think as a young kid, I mean, the the biggest thing for me would be just to enjoy that moment more of actually being in Rangers Academy, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Because I mean, there's so many kids that they end up not having a Canadian football, which is harsh to say, but but you know it's the truth. And yeah. uh, you know, academy football, especially when the support and stuff that the kids get now in terms of school and then the overseas trips they get or the best of best programs mm-hmm. you, you know they get everything done for them and and i think for the kids and the parents as well because it's, it's memories that will take forever um, yeah. and it's stuff that happened to me when i was 13 14 15 16 17 18 that i'll remember for the rest of my life and it's some of the best mm-hmm. moments that i've had in my life so uh, you know, I'm I'm 22 years old and I played football on four different continents, and yeah. a massive part of that is because of Rangers. So it's not a thing that many people would say. Uh, and I think for a lot of the kids, they need to realise at a young age that it's not all just serious. It's not all just football. Blah blah blah. They need to enjoy yeah. it as well. Uh, mm-hmm. That's probably the biggest message that I could give them. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much, Max. That's I really really appreciate you being here. Not a problem at all, mate. As I say. I've seen some of the, the what you've been doing. I've seen you had Mark and stuff on for Brighton. So um, it's, uh, you know, I'm just happy to help me. And anything else you need, you can just give us a shout anytime. Thanks very much, Mark. Hey, Max, you're no <laughs> <laughs> You're fine, mate. <laughs> uh, cheers. <laughs>